Hello and welcome to Mangley Town. Today we have a very colourful treat for you with the new Hornby Eurostar, the Beatles Yellow Submarine train pack and coach pack. So we'll have a look at them and we'll give them a little run as well. Um, yes, there is two coach packs. I'll come on to that shortly when we hit those. But first of all, we have the Eurostar train pack, which is R3829 and it is set 3005 and 3006 for the power car and the dummy car and then we have the coach pack which is R40001 and doesn't list coach numbers for them we'll find out when we open it see if it does actually list them or not but as with the trains inside the packaging is very very colourful as well and there we have it there and that will show what it will be like with all six on there. So we'll open it up and we'll have a look. So we have a standard operation and maintenance leaflet and also coupling information and also installation for the DCC chip, which I'll try and come on to later as well. But yes, as the box shows, that is a very, very colourful set. I've just literally picked this up hot foot from my local supplier, which is Kent Garden Railways, who I can highly recommend. Um, he doesn't have a shop open anymore. He's only online. I'll tag the website in the description here. Um, I still haven't seen a shop which is with as big a range as he's got, and it's always excellent and friendly service. Um, I will say it's www kgrmodels.com but as I say I've put a link in the description because he did me a real favour getting me the train pack in so quickly so we'll have a start with a look at these I believe that's the dummy car so start with no I think that is the dummy car then that does feel a bit lighter although there's still a decent amount of weight and hopefully it's going to focus. It is very, very nice artwork on it. I will have to say on a personal note, I'm not a massive fan of the Beatles. I don't mind their money, uh, their, their music. Um, never actually watched the film. But I'm a collector of high-speed passenger trains, in particular Hornby. And this was a real life livery as well so it is something I just had to have I think they've still put enough detail on this I don't know if it's still the same mouldings as the previous Eurostar livery I reckon it is but I'm still quite happy with how it looks so I'll pop that in and then we have one of the generator coaches And the coach connector as well. It is nicely protected with all the polythene and the wheel protectors as well. My only little bugbear with the Eurostars is I really, really like this coupling. It does give the look of the connecting corridor on the coaches. Unfortunately, I think that still looks cheap though. I don't know why I haven't done uh, close coupling connectors like they have on the class 395s and the 800s, etc. I just think that just detracts from the look of it. But they've got nice packer craft detail and I know they do pop up as well. There we go. There's that bit at least and the rest should pop up. So that's the train pack. 
and we'll have a quick look at one of the coach packs as well. So here we have the coach pack. There's a similar little instruction leaflet in there, which just covers how you connect them together. Also, there's another spare set of traction wheels there, and you get a spare set in with the loco. I also understand the traction wheels on the power unit are on opposite wheels as well. So there's a better chance of giving um, grip, which actually works. Again, the extra coaches are just as colorful as the main unit. And as I say, although I'm not into the details, I do think it is a fab looking train. It'll be very nice to see what it looks like on some actual track shortly when we give it a spin. So, on to why I bought two coach sets. From my understanding, uh, the original Eurostar train, which was painted in the Beatles livery, was an 18 coach train. Obviously, Hornby didn't want to produce anything that long, so they've condensed all the graphics down um, into these um, six coaches and motor units. But, as you can see, you've got to design that side and a different design that side. So my plan was two coach packs and have one set like that and then have the other set flipped throw from either side you still get the different design and I then get an eight coach long pack. I'll have to see what it looks like but I think my issue is going to be those. I don't know if when I flip them around the other way if they'll match up with connectors on the main unit. I'm hoping they will do. If not, and I'll find out shortly, it may just be a case of um, I reckon I'd be able to take those two bogies off and either swap the bogies or just swap the connectors. But we'll find out very shortly when I get it on the little diorama test circuit. So we'll have a look at that. So here we are on the test track. Let's see how many different sides of those coaches I got on. It does look really nice with a fair bit of light as well. That's first generator coach. One coach pack one, the other half of a coach pack one. So now we should have the same two designs. But no, that's the other side of the coach. And same there as well. And a little bit of a stop, because that's as far as the living room goes. And then we have the other generator coach and the other power car. So, at least from a view inside, that is eight different coaches. And also makes it a decent enough length as well. Now, the next thing is, as it doesn't appear to have directional lighting, is to get it chipped up and on the layout where it's also hopefully a bit flatter. So I'll just give you a close look up over each of the different power cars and coaches for the livery on them. I must say the graphics are nice and crisp as well. And then the dummy car. And 
and one of the generator coaches. They have also got seating inside as well, which does look quite good on this one. And the other generator coach. Oh no, no, it's one of the normal coaches. Who wants to go off the table? And the other coach in the coach pack. And then the other generator coach. So what I had to do on these, on the coaches, I did to start with, take the body off the chassis and then I was able to push the fitting in on the top of that and pull it out. For the other coach it seems though Hornby have glued the casing down so I couldn't do that but with wiggling that I did manage to pull that out so basically I just swapped the two round and I can't remember because one of these came out as I was doing it I might have needed to actually swap that over as well so it connected on the top but then that meant I basically uh, from one side have got eight different coaches right now that's had a little test run on the test track stroke diorama we'll get a chip in it so it can go on the main layout got retaining screws one there and one in there they're quite a way down and it's quite a small hole so you do need a long thin small Phillips head screwdriver and got success on that one This one's definitely being a bit more stubborn. They never seem to make these awkward. On the class 800s, it's so awkward to get the little cover at the bottom back on once you've actually put a chip in it. This one does not want to play ball just as yet. Right. 
I'll have a food with that off camera and we'll come back to it in a minute when I finally got the top off. Right, so finally it came out and then it's just easy enough to pop the top off of that. No problem at all on that. And there we have the blanking chip there. So we'll grab a chip and pop that in. Right, because I use the Gauge Master controller system, I always prefer to use Gauge Master chips. So we have an 8 pin there. So if we just pop the blanking chip off, find our number one hole. which doesn't appear to be marked. So, we'll try this way round. For some reason, that seems logical to me. So, pop this lid back on and do the screws back up and we'll go and pop on the programming track and we'll see what happens. Now again, it's not awfully good attention to detail from Hornby if they're not marking where the number one chip spot is. Make sure this is lined up correctly. That looks better. Again, I don't know if there's really a guide to show you what position we should go back on. Other than that's about the easiest top I've ever had to get off and on. Do be careful when you're holding this to make sure that you don't press down on the pantograph. That looks how it's got it. They appear to be in nice and tight. So we'll go and see what it looks like on the layout. So here we are, finally onto the main layout. I had guessed right with the chip, and it's the number one slot facing to the front of the train. She has had a few troubles with the traction tyres getting grip occasionally, but then again, I suppose it's pulling two extra coaches than it was designed for, but. It should have more than enough grunt for that, really. As you can see, there's still quite a bit of other stuff left on the layout. For any of my regular viewers, it's just been so busy of late. 
to find time to do anything train related <coughs> other than perhaps looking on eBay for more but I just had to share this one with you especially as I worked out how to get that 7th and 8th carriage on there and again it does look quite cool just looks as you're going round as if it has got all of those different coaches also a little bit annoyed it hasn't got any sort of lighting I wasn't really expecting directional but lighting would have been nice and it's nice to see the layout still works Whee! I must admit for some brand new trains I've had out of the box they have been a bit fitty and starty and so apart from a couple of traction issues this one has been fine straight onto the layout and as for normal with me I do like to ramp him up to full speed And it's going around no problem. No problem over points either. It just does look nice something with nice varied colours going around the layout. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my look at the new Beatles Eurostar. Uh, I suppose now is the time I ask you to subscribe, that's entirely up to you. I'll leave that to you, all I will say is uh, I, I might have accidentally built up to about 31 different Inter City 125s now, so I've still got quite a few of those to share with you, and some other purchases as well, I'm hoping to do another couple of shopping hauls over the next few weeks to show you some of the stuff I've been adding to my collection and also get them on the layout for some nice running sessions to show share with you so I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope to show you something else again very soon take care and stay safe everyone <laughs>